because he knew he was off and he left. I yes. mean, that's got to, I, I can't, as a, as like the guy's brother, I can't even imagine what that feels like. You know, Mark warned Dave. He said, listen, the guy's not all there. And Dave thought, you know what? I met him. I think I can control him. And he, he was able to control John for a while. You know, he J Dave was the only one that John listened to. And I believe that's when, when John cracked, Dave was the first one that he wanted to kill because So you had mentioned maybe 15, 20 minutes ago about a little bit of the background with Dave and his brother Mark vis-a-vis -vis John DuPont at, at Foxcatcher and Mark obviously had some some doubts about John as yeah, a person. Yeah, you know, John was acting a little weird, as he always did. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I've been in instances where I'd be in his house, his mansion, and I'd be in his awards room, and, you know, he'd say, hey, come over for pizza. So i come over to have dinner with him. They were, he was going to order pizza. And um, he'd walk through the awards room, and he had, like, white powder on his nose. And he was sniffing his nose and doing this and trying to, you know, get rid of the cocaine. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, he would leave the room, and then he'd come back, and he had a gun. He'd just have a gun. Yeah, and he's like, Kurt, you need to leave. I'm like okay what's going on he said you just need to leave and he took the other guy that was there his name was rob calabrese and he said we need to go downstairs he was always he always thought somebody was after him so he mm -hmm. thought people were spying on him all the time intense paranoia yes yes so he goes down to the basement and they find a, a tunnel from the civil war that were the um where they were able to I don't know if it was getting the slaves through or or the soldiers, but it went from the mansion to another home, about 500 yards. And they went down there, and John DuPont had the gun loaded, and he told Rob, the person he was with, get in the tunnel, and the tunnel was only four feet high. So you had to bend over to get in it. You had to bend over to get in the tunnel. And John was behind Rob, and he points the gun at Rob's ass. <laughs> and they're walking through the tunnel 500 feet, and Rob's praying to God that the gun doesn't go off. So it was just crazy hearing stories like this that John would do. And um, we were all a little bit guilty of knowing that John was kind of losing it. The problem was we didn't want the money train to end. Uh. I mean, we're, I'm not going to lie to you. There were instances where we were like, okay, there's something going on here. This, this guy needs some kind of help. And everybody was just like, let's hold off till the Olympics. You know, uh -huh. Let's just get to the Olympics. And we were almost there, you know? So everybody was going to kind of go their own separate ways after the 96 Olympics. What about Dave? Was Dave he, was, was he too. Dave, Dave wanted to stay. The only person that John would listen to was Dave. So Dave was the one that really um, brought John down to reality and would keep him in check. And uh, so that's probably why John killed Dave. Is because Dave was the one that he respected the most. And I, I think that there, there was something there between those two that, you know, I, I don't know what it was, but for some reason, John just one day decided to go out and shoot Dave. Do you, when you first met John, I think mm -hmm. you were talking about like when he pointed at the trophy case or whatever, like that day, did you sense it right away? Like this guy's off? You could tell he was off. Yeah. Um, but he was very eccentric and, uh, he was also pretty smart, so you didn't know if he was crazy or just put on a show. I mean, you know, uh, put it this way. Uh, I remember one time he uh, he had the world governing body, the guy that uh, was the head of FILA for the world governing body of wrestling. He was the president of the whole world uh, of wrestling, and he had him as a guest at his farm, and uh, he was in the training facilities, and John comes in and tells him, hey, come with me. And they leave and they go outside and they get into John's car. And when the guy got into John's car, John opened the back door and said, get in, welcome to Balkan Airlines. <laughs> and the guy was like, what are you talking about? He's like, get in the, get in the, uh, get on the plane is what he said. And the guy gets in, he closes the door, he puts a chauffeur hat on <laughs> and he drives his car down this hill on his farm and you have to go, got, got to do like a hard left to stay on the road. Yeah. Because there's a lake right in front of the, where if you go straight, you're going to go right in the lake. Right. Mm. He went down, floored the car and went right in the lake. 
he thought he was taking off on an airplane. And uh, so this guy comes back to the facility. He's soaking wet because John <laughs> had to save him. John had to get him out of the car. So he comes back soaking wet. The guy's motherfucking everybody. And he's really pissed off. And it was like, holy shit, John, why'd you do that? I don't know. So was he doing crazy stuff? Yeah, he was. And uh, unfortunately, we probably stayed around a little bit too long. And uh, it, it sucks because, you know, it, it cost Dave his life. Yeah. So I, you said it was like six months before the Olympics? Yes. So this is the beginning of 96? This was January of 96. So yeah. essentially one day. And, and if, if people haven't seen... Fox the, the, the movie, movie Fox yeah. Catcher. It, it would you say Steve Carell did a pretty? He he nailed it. So did so did uh, Mark Rutledge, uh, even Ruffalo? Channing uh, Ruffalo. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah, Mark Ruffalo. He he did an incredible job. He he reminded me of Dave so much his mannerisms, uh, mm -hmm. but but they nailed that movie. Yeah. The only the only thing that didn't happen was they kind of made it look like Mark Schultz and John Dupont were kind of like you know, close, close, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 And, you know, like, John dyed his hair blonde. Uh, Mark, Mark, he never did that. That right. was all, I think it was just a Hollywood it up. Well, but, they got to do something. Yeah, they probably yeah. wanted to add a little another storyline to yeah. it, but that, that wasn't the case. But that my, was just stupid. My understanding is that the way that they showed the ultimate scene was pretty spot on yeah with, with yeah what he did. From, from what i heard yes. it's it's probably that scene with steve carell and fox catcher is probably one of the more chilling scenes i've ever watched because it almost the way the who directed that movie do we remember that oh gosh um, can we look that up alessi fox catcher movie director i just i i want to i want to give a shout out here because like it was so well done but okay, Bennett. So the director was Bennett Miller. Bennett but Miller. the way that he filmed that scene before Steve decides, or John in the movie decides to get in the car, it's almost like the Fredo Corleone thing, right? Where right. he's far shot, laying yeah. back, just dead, like yeah. dead to the world in the chair like this. I was getting hard, John, because all vibes. And yeah. then he gets in the car, drives across the estate to mm -hmm. where Mark has a home. Yep. Mark, or not, not Dave. Mark, Dave, I'm sorry, where Dave has a home, Dave is, greets him in, in his driveway, yeah. and John just rolls down the window and shoots him in front of his family, and then yeah. shoots him in the back, and then drives off like nothing happened. Yep, he, he shot him, and uh, he kept, got outside the car, Nancy saw, heard the gunshot, and she ran out. Dave's a wife. Yeah, and she's like, I'm going to call the cops, and John looked at Dave and shot him in the back while he's laying on the ground. Then he got in his car and went back to his house. And uh, I think John, in his own crazy mind, thought that he was safe in his house. He literally told the cops, can I just stay here for my sentence? <laughs> I mean, you know, he was, he was so out He's of it. He's a sick I, guy. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. really was. And you know what? He was, probably, he was probably that way before we even knew him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Might have been a little DuPont inbreeding going on there. You that, never know. Well, that, that's the, you know, there are rumors going yeah. around that, that that could have been possible. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was off for sure. Yeah, but where do you remember where you were when that happened? I was actually training at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. I called Dave that afternoon about the time he was getting killed. Um, I called him to tell him I'm coming out tomorrow, so I'll be there. Uh, be ready for me. And uh, then I got done wrestling at wrestling practice at Duquesne, and I was watching the news, and I looked on CNN. And it said uh, Dave Schultz was just shot and killed by John Dupont, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like, this is world news. Like, I, mean, I just called Dave this afternoon, and here he, he's gone. So it was like, what happened, you know? And then I thought, I guess I do know what happened. John John cracked. I mean, you know, it, it's not, it wasn't a surprise, you know? I just was hoping it would, wouldn't happen until we were gone. It's crazy how, yeah. like, in the build up to something like that, it's as you described it, you guys, the attitude's almost like, all right, let's just let's make Wait it to 96. It yep, yep. But, like, in the back of your mind, subconsciously, you know yep. this guy could, go could do time. something, mm -hmm. not necessarily to Dave, but to anybody. Yep. And then he did. Yes, he did. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.